Let's move on to noise insulation of wheel arches. Noise insulation of wheel arches is carried out both outside and inside the car interior. Today, we will talk about external noise insulation of wheel arches of this particular part. External treatment of wheel arches is carried out in different ways. There are many options. The option, which we offer, is to apply a two-component mastic on the metal of wheel arches. As for protection when working with mastic, it is divided into three parts. These are the protection of premises, that is, of the floor, the protection of a car, and the protection of a specialist. Let's start with the floor. In order to protect the floor from drops of mastic, you can lay a box like this. One box is enough to protect the entire area under the wheel arch. The second part is protecting the car body. In order to protect the body, we use this masking tape. The important thing here is to protect the surface around the wheel arch. In this case, we have a plastic rim. It definitely needs to be protected from mastic because if the mastic gets on it and hardens, it will be very difficult for you to get rid of it after hardening. Next, we protect the hub and suspension elements. There are different ways to do it. You can use film, like we did here, or tape. The main thing is to prevent mastic from getting on them during work. Further, right inside the arch we make sure to protect these pins, wires, cables, everything that can be found here. There can be a lot of things. In this area of the wheel arch, everything that is attached to the wheel arch needs to be protected with masking tape. This is also done to prevent mastic from getting on them, because if mastic will be left somewhere, and you will then try tearing it off after hardening, this will become a problem. Therefore, it is important to make sure that nothing interferes with applying the mastic, and it will not get on any other surface except the one that we are going to treat. Consider this as if you are applying an anti-corrosive agent. When an anti-corrosive agent is applied, everything is covered as well. Regarding the protection of a specialist who will apply mastic, it is very important to have rubber, nitrile, or latex gloves in general, rubber ones that will protect the skin the hands, and simply prevent the specialist from getting dirty because it is quite difficult to wash mastic off the hands. Ideally, you can put on a suit like the one that anti-corrosion specialists wear, which looks like overalls, but most of the time we just work in work pants. Just pants specifically used when working with mastic, which you don't fear to smudge with it. And then we just change clothes for working with the interior. By the way, in part for this reason, regular work with mastic is separated from work with the rest of the interior, so that you don't have to move around the cabin in these clothes, remove the roof, and so on. After we have prepared the body, it is important to prepare the metal itself. And there are several aspects here. The most important thing, of course, is to wash the wheel arch. The arch we have here has already been washed and degreased. For washing, we usually use either some kind of detergent or just water. We degrease the body metal and check its condition. There can be several issues, the biggest of which is corrosion, of course. Despite the fact that the mastic is anti-corrosive, it cannot be applied on spots of corrosion, that is, you must first remove them, treat this part of metal with primer, and only then apply our compound. It is also important to check vibration damping compounds that were applied to this metal by manufacturer. It can be some kind of vibro damper sheets or plastisol, for example, in Toyotas. And we also recommend to remove it because it can absorb water, retain it underneath, and when preparing will arches you simply won't see it. Everything will seem fine, but in fact you are just conserving water under mastic. Thus, this will not improve but worsen the corrosion. So, the metal should be like this, clean. If you see that metal is fine, there is no corrosion, everything is clean, you need to degrease it. For degreasing, we recommend using compounds containing petroleum solvent. For example, 
this Holex degreaser. There are quite a lot of good compounds, but there are also bad ones that stink and are very toxic. Please avoid them. The degreaser should be fairly neutral, and the main thing is that it does not leave behind any substances. We've degreased the metal, removed everything from the surface, anti-corrosive agents, paraffin, and so on. It is important to ensure that the metal is clean, with no residues. The degreaser itself may sometimes be bad, leaving behind some kind of grease and oily residue. Also, it is a very common situation when a car arrives with anti-corrosion protection already applied. In this case, we either refuse to do noise insulation or offer to dismantle the anti-corrosion protection. As a rule, if it is a bitumen-based compound, Prim, Prim Body, Mobile, or ML, it is removed with an anti bitumen compound or white spirit. But the latter is quite toxic and smelly. Therefore, we wash it all off with anti bitumen compound, and only after degreasing we apply our compound. What are the dangers of applying mastic to anti corrosive agents? This is dangerous because it will hold on for some time of course, but then, depending on the condition of the anti-corrosive agent itself, it will come off. Cracks will appear in some areas, that is, the mastic will not work as required for sound insulation, and it will not hold securely. Therefore, we do not recommend applying our mastic to anti-corrosive agents. The mastic is applied to clean metal, primer, or, if necessary, to painted sealant. It happens that painted sealant, body sealant, even not painted, is visible. Mastic can be applied to it as well, but we do not recommend applying it to anti-corrosive agents. They shall be dismantled. Now, let's move on to the mastic itself. The mastic looks like this, these two cans. It's called STP Noise Liquidator Vibration Damping Mastic. This is a hardener, and this is the mastic itself. For application, the mastic is mixed. The hardener is poured into the mastic can and stirred, for some time resulting in a full-fledged compound which you can work with. It looks like this. Here is component A. All the hardener is poured into a can with mastic, and we get a working mixture that can be applied to the wheel arch. Here is what I can say about this mastic in general. Let's start with what it actually is. This is a two-component compound, that is, there are one-component anti-corrosive agents, and there is a two-component mastic. A two-component mastic based on epoxy resins with additives. Some people are skeptical about epoxy compounds because of the myth that it can crack, and so on. I assure you, this mastic is a completely different matter. This is an anti-corrosive epoxy mastic with a huge number of additives that allow you to plasticize this entire surface and prevent cracking and moisture, or anything else from getting under it. We have been using this mastic for 11 years now, and we have never had any cases of something cracking or falling off. On the contrary, cars are protected as much as possible, and sometimes we dismantle it on purpose, which can be done if desired, although this is a rather difficult process. We do it to check the condition of metal. I did this on my car. We tried to check what actually happens to the metal of a car after 5 or 10 years of normal usage after applying mastic. The answer is that nothing happens. The metal is protected as if by a good anti-corrosive agent. That is, no additional problems appear with any rust spots or anything like that. This is what I have to say on criticism of epoxy compounds. This mastic is two component, that is, we mix two components, stir them, and this is the compound we get. Here there is no second component yet. I just removed the film and opened it. It is thick for now, but if you add the second component, it will become more liquid. It looks like an ordinary anti-corrosive agent of a dark brown, 
or black color and does not stand out in any way on the body. One such can is enough to treat one wheel arch. That is, as a rule, a set of four such cans is enough to treat the entire surface of a car. There are different products on the market. One such set of a mastic and a hardener costs from a thousand to one and a half thousand rubles. It is recommended to apply the mastic within 20 minutes. After 20 minutes from the moment of mixing the two components, a chemical reaction will begin and the mastic will gradually harden. Therefore, the mixed compound must be used within 20 minutes. To speed up the drying process, we use a heat gun. We will show you how this is done. After drying, you can install a mudguard. The mastic will no longer stick to anything. This is important because if a mudguard is immediately installed, then may come off along with studs, or the studs may glue to the mudguard. This is not good. Therefore, it is important to let the mastic dry. We install the mudguard, and after 12 hours you can already use the car. I mean that you can drive through puddles and anywhere, everything will be fine. For proper noise insulation of wheel arches, we need to treat the mudguards as well. In this case, we have plastic mudguards, so we use vibration absorbing material STP Aero Plus. Why this particular material? STP Aero Plus provides vibration damping of this element, that is, it absorbs vibration, sound from pebbles, sand, water, and so on, and also isolates sound from the wheel and suspension. STP Aero isolates these sounds due to its mass. In order to apply the material correctly, it is necessary to prepare the surface. This mudguard has already been prepared, degreased, and cleaned of dirt. If the mudguard is in the same condition as we see here, a vibration cushioning material can be applied to it. It can be done both edge to edge and slightly overlapping. In this case, it doesn't matter. The main thing is that this element would not become too thick. It is important here that the mudguard sits perfectly in the place where it was, and these fasteners land exactly into the studs. STP Aero must be rolled out with a roller. There are some areas that the vibration cushioning material should not be applied to. For example, this rim, these attachment points, they should not be covered with anything. If you completely cover the entire plastic surface with the material, you will definitely not be able to put the mudguard back in place. Therefore, you need to approach this work wisely. STP Aero should be rolled out using a roller. All edges of the material and its entire area must be rolled out until the embossing is smooth. So, we've talked about preparing for the process of arch noise insulation and about the products we use. Let's now discuss the process itself. So, we have completed the work on the wheel arch.
The arch is completely treated with STP Noise Liquidator Mastic. We applied it with a brush. We do it carefully, wearing gloves, and then smooth everything out with a brush. Now the drying is taking place, that is, you need to wait some time, about three hours, but we speed up this process with the help of a stove. After that, we will be able to put the mudguard back. As I said before, the most important thing is not to assemble the mudguard with wet mastic, because it will stick tightly, and then it will be very difficult to clean it away. As planned, we treated the mudguard with STP Aero Plus. Everything went smoothly, the material was rolled out and stuck perfectly, all these small details were treated. Of course, as planned, we left part of this rim, these fastening points and this technological hole in order to then properly assemble the mudguard. So, all the work is completed, the arch is treated, the mudguard is treated, and now everything can be assembled back. Noise insulation of wheel arches is done in order to reduce the overall noise in the car interior and the noise from wheel arches. In percentage terms, measurements show that wheel arches become approximately 30% quieter, and the sound pressure in the interior is reduced by 15%. So it's a pretty effective procedure. We always recommend starting any noise insulation with the treatment of wheel arches, because if you do the interior first, then the noise from arches will still partially remain, and you will be able to dampen it only by external treatment. And vice versa, if you do only arches, you will still hear noise from the bottom. So we recommend combining the treatment of wheel arches and the interior. STP Mastic is not called anti-corrosive for nothing, because it is one of the best means of protecting metal from corrosion, gravel, and reagents. This mastic can be used even without a mudguard. There are quite a lot of cars that do not have a mudguard, in which case you can also use the mastic. Over time, it will not break, fall off, and so on. It will become a part of the body. This is a huge advantage of our mastic. If the locker is made of felt and allows water to pass through, I also recommend protecting the metal of wheel arches with mastic. The water and dirt that make their way through these mud guards to metal condense and create a great environment for metal to bloom, or something else bad may result out of it. In this case, I also recommend protecting the metal of wheel arches even if you do not have a mudguard or have a felt one. By the way, in this car we have plastic mudguards, but if you have felt ones, then STP has specific solutions for processing felt lockers, which we will not talk about today, but please keep in mind that there is a special STP Mastic Noise Liquidator for felt lockers.